morning Anchor Point family. It's good to be with you whatever day you're watching this. Um, hopefully I'll see you in real life out at our place this afternoon if you're watching this on Sunday morning. We would love to start gathering a bit more in real life as you feel ready to do so. So we're hoping to have some worship and some prayer and just to see each other face to face. So if you're ready, we're ready to have you out. Whether you want to come out for an hour or stay for a good portion of the day, we just really want to um, spend time together as we journey this season through in a different way. It's kind of like God has pressed reset on how we do church, isn't it? Um, we couldn't have foreseen this. We couldn't have foreseen this happening for so long. And this is definitely not a production, but we're learning to do life together in new ways. So yeah, that's this afternoon, two o'clock out at our house. Um, the address and information is on the Facebook family page or on the website and hope to see you there. Um, so again, my name is Brenda, actually not again, I haven't said it yet, have I? My name is Brenda and I have been attending Anchor Point with my husband, Simon. I'm Simon. For about 11, 12 years now. Uh, we have four adult children and we have one left at home. And I'm just really excited to be sharing with you today from Acts, from Acts 26 and 27. So we will talk more and let's just pray before we open the word. God, you're so good. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for how you lead us, guide us, direct us, speak to us, love us. Thank you for drawing us into your family. And thank you that that work is not done. May we be a people who declare your gospel with our whole lives. So Holy Spirit, come speak to us through what I'm going to share. May anything that is not helpful to the building up of your people just fall away. And may your word stick. Whatever you have to speak to our hearts, may, be, may we be open to hear from you. In Jesus' name. So I'm just going to start by doing a quick overview of Acts 26 and 27. Um, Acts 26 is Paul standing before King Agrippa and Festus. And these are two leaders. He's been in jail now for like two years. And he has asked to have an audience with Caesar in Rome there's been a lot going on in those two years. He's been treated pretty well as a prisoner. He's had his own place to stay and he's allowed to have Luke with him, obviously, and other believers coming and he's speaking Jesus, speaking Jesus, speaking Jesus. We see all throughout Acts that people are speaking Jesus throughout all the circumstances that they're in every circumstance so he starts there he's he's um, having an audience before King Agrippa he's sharing his story again and Josh did a great job a couple weeks ago of talking about the power of sharing our story he's at it again Paul is at it again he is sharing his um, encounter with Jesus and how he came to be a follower of the way. His focus, Paul's focus in all of this was not escaping trouble. It was not to get out of circumstances. It was to speak Jesus in every situation that he found himself in. Our primary concern as people of the way is that our lives in all seasons, in all circumstances, 
declare the gospel. We look at what Paul said later on. He said, I have learned that whatever circumstance I'm in, I need to be content. And part of that is because if we're not, it distracts from the gospel. If our focus is to, Lord, why aren't you, why aren't we, why aren't you changing my circumstances or rescuing me or getting me out of this pinch? Then our focus is not on love, it's on fear. Our focus is not on speaking Jesus, it's on me having control and my way. So we need to learn to be content in whatsoever situation we find ourselves in. We see through Acts that sometimes God broke in and did miraculous things and broke people out of jail and um, intervened in, in ways that we don't usually see. That's why it's called a miracle. But even if he didn't, show up that way all the time. You know, Paul had been broken out of prison before and he wasn't this time. So that that's like Acts 26 shows him. He is in prison and he is declaring the gospel. We can declare the gospel of Jesus in whatever circumstance we are in. Sometimes it feels like we're imprisoned by our circumstances. And to Paul, and probably the other believers, it probably felt like he was imprisoned and that the gospel somehow was being restrained by his being in prison. Little did he know God had other plans for that. In Acts 27, he's now being taken to... <laughs> it's starting to rain. Of course it is in every circumstance, right? In Acts 27, Paul is being taken to, he's being put on a ship and he says, I've got, I've got bad vibes about this. I don't think we should go. I think we're gonna die if we get on this ship. And they basically say, too bad, you're outvoted. We're gonna take the um, specialist's view on this. And off they go, they get on this ship. And of course, a big storm blows up and the ship is, is crashing around. Now, Paul, he had some assurance. He had some comfort. He had some words of encouragement. He loved the people on this boat. And he spoke Jesus to them in the middle of that and said, God's got this. God's got this. We're going to lose the boat, but he's sparing our lives. And again, he's speaking Jesus in whatever circumstance we're in. This is not about me or my comfort. It's not about you or your comfort. This is about the good news of Christ with us, the hope of glory, and spreading that good news around. I've been reading this book that Nicole gave me I think a year ago, I'm sorry I haven't returned it, Nicole, uh, called Evangelism for Nor Normal People. And he quotes something really, I'm going to read a quote from it, um, where he asks us to look at the journey of the believers through Acts. They start in Jerusalem. And that was comfortable for them. Jerusalem was the birthplace of Judaism, right? So the first the gospel came to the Jews and that was where they were comfortable. But it wasn't long before persecution happened. People died, people suffered. So we saw Stephen um, being killed for the sake of the gospel. So, I mean, up until then, the church was like growing. It was an exciting time to be a Jewish believer in Jerusalem. And there was comfort and growth and joy and exuberance as they saw people added to the kingdom day by day. So it would have been an exciting time. And I think we have had those times in Anchor Point. It ha there have been exciting times 
to be a part of Anchor Point and to see what God is doing in and through the church and seeing people added and people coming to know him, there have been exciting, comfortable times. And yet, Holy Spirit has bigger plans than that. And sometimes it takes circumstances beyond our control to move us out of what is comfortable. Um, in the book that I'm reading, The Evangelism for Normal People, um, John P. Bowen, this is a quote from him. He says, ask yourself, where is my Jerusalem? Where do I feel comfortable, useful, unthreatened? Now, where is my Samaria? Who are the people in my book who are not quite kosher? Who cause discomfort in me? And who are my Gentiles? It didn't stop there. The Jews, Christians were pushed out into Samaria and then into the surrounding regions. And we see Peter and Paul going to the Gentiles who had not um, had access to God's presence before. And he goes and he shares the gospel. So who are my Gentiles? Nothing seemingly in common with those people. Um, their, their lifestyle is alien to me. And now, who is my circumcision party? Now that's a, a funny way. So who, are, who are the Pharisees in my life? What are the voices in my life that say, don't, don't risk, don't change, do what's comfortable? We only grow through change. And that means taking risks. Change leaves means leaving behind what is familiar and comfortable. And certainly the past year has seen a wacky pile of changes in many of our lives that are beyond our control, that have rattled us. And we can choose to stubbornly stomp our feet and refuse to move forward or we can go with the leading of the Holy Spirit and see how the gospel is spread in our lives in our families in our communities in our church um, love is our motivation we are loved we are loved we are loved that's that's one of our values is knowing our identity we are loved and therefore we will love. We do not speak Jesus out of guilt. Please don't do that. <laughs> I've done that. It feels yucky to me, and it also feels yucky to the people that are hearing it. We want to speak Jesus out of love. Um, the Holy Spirit moves us. Will we follow his lead? We have limited perspective, but we have to trust that the Holy Spirit has the best perspective. Um, we look at, again, like this not being about our comfort. Look in um, the verse in Acts 4. So going off of what the believers were praying, that they would be able to speak the word in boldness, no matter what circumstances they were in. We want to follow the Spirit's leading. I know in my own life, there have been circumstances in the last year where God has shook me up out of my Jerusalem. Now we, we look at the things that caused the Jerusalem believers to move out of Jerusalem and they're not great things, right? It's uh, persecution and stuff. And I've never faced things like, like they were facing for sure. But circumstances can definitely change the way we do things. You know, we, we um, used to have the well as our, our main um, place and vehicle of outreach and things changed. And that definitely shook things up for me. And I can see now 
that God was shaking up a Jerusalem in my life where, um, where I felt comfortable, where I felt, not that it was always comfortable, but certainly um, God has chosen to move things on. Then COVID um, and Tom is on sabbatical and there's just a lot going on, right? Can I trust that God's in that? Can I speak the gospel in the middle of that? And I wrote some ideas out here. When we think of Paul being imprisoned for so long, you think, what? Like, he could have been going around, he could have been discipling all those churches, he could have been preaching. God had something way farther reaching than that. If Paul hadn't have been in prison, he wouldn't have been writing these letters to us that we're going to to be reading more of in the coming days. We wouldn't he he thought he was writing to the Corinthians, to the Galatians, to the Ephesian church. Little did he know that he was writing to us here 2000 years later. His God's plan was far more far reaching than he would have ever assumed or known. Um, the beauty of all this is that God's love and redemption is able to break right into the middle of the greatest pain. Pain does not constrain Jesus and the Holy Spirit. He is able to break into the depths of suffering, into our brokenness. He injected Jesus into our reality, our pain, our suffering, our brokenness, and he took it, experiences it, and was broken by it. And then there was waiting. He experienced death, a human death. He went ahead of me and experienced what I will and went wherever the dead go. And we waited for those three long days and then resurrection. And life came and redeemed the brokenness. God chose to work through the confinements and the systems of being human, which blows my mind. He didn't have to do that, but he chose, Jesus chose to enter our humanity right in the middle of it. He didn't go around it. He didn't come up with some kind of cosmic way to enter our reality. He entered it with us. There is no experience of our lives that Jesus has not been in or isn't already there. And he's patiently worked his redemptive love through the suffering. It may not look what we hope for, and it probably won't. There's more coming, guys. I, I, I'm not trying to be a forecaster of doom, but life on earth has its, its suffering, has its challenges, its shares. There's more coming, but Jesus, but God is able to speak to us and enter our suffering with us. Just like Paul, when he was on that boat and craziness was going around, it sounds familiar, doesn't it? Like Jesus in the boat when the storm is raging, he's calm, he's calm. And Paul is calm as well and encourages those around him in this storm. The joy is that we, that the joy is that where we end up see that is where we end up seeing the glory of him we know him when we suffer we know him in his suffering we know him in his death and his resurrection oh that we his people would stop chasing escapism and magical answers to our pain and discomfort and constructs that seem to constrain us but may we accept wherever we are, whatever circumstances we're in, and accept that God is at work. Even when we don't know what he's doing, he is at work in ways that we don't know of. 
the world around us, the other, the other beautiful thing is the world around us, they get the pain. They recognize that in us. But they're stunned by Jesus in the middle of our pain. His glory is so much magnified through the lens of our human experience than through us living lives that no one else could relate to. We're not in some kind of weird protective bubble that removes us from the human experience around us. Sometimes God breaks in and he does a miracle and changes our circumstances and intervenes in a way and that brings glory to him. He does that so he is glorified, so Jesus is glorified and proclaimed and declared and seen. And more often I would say he breaks in and walks with us. And Paul writes letters to the churches and has audiences with kings and sailors and all kinds of people that he would not have had if he hadn't been imprisoned. God showed up and he used all of it. Nothing is wasted. He reached farther than we can understand. Nothing is wasted. There is no circumstance in your life right now or in my life. You know, I don't, I don't really know what God's doing right now in my life. And I'm excited because I'm old. <laughs> and I've been able to see him through a lot of challenges, a lot of pain in my um, family of origin, in my, in my current family. I'm watching my kids learn how to adult. That's painful sometimes and scary. You know, all that stuff happened in the fall and I don't know what I'm doing right now. And God. And God is so good anyways. And I want to declare him with my whole life, declaring the gospel. We have a limited perspective, but we can trust that God wants to partner with us. And we need to flow with his leading. We need to. There's life and life more abundantly. It doesn't mean we're not going to suffer. But when I suffer with Jesus, it's worth it. Because I know him more. Let me just pray blessing on you and then um, hang tight because I'm excited that a whole bunch of people have been willing and I wish I could have gone to everybody and got everybody to participate in this and I'm looking forward to gathering together so that we can do this in in person as time moves on here but I want you to hear people proclaiming, just in short form, um, why Jesus is good news to them. So let me just pray, and then we'll head into hearing um, people from our family declaring, why is the gospel good news to you? Holy Spirit, we need you, and we need to trust you more. Be the wind that guides our lives, that moves us to love deeper. That moves in and through our circumstances. That gives us divine appointments to glorify Jesus. Come Holy Spirit, we need you. We need your power to cause us to be bold, to speak you through our pain, through our circumstances, through the joy of life, through whatever challenges we have had, we are having or will go through. Be glorified in us. 
you are such good news. May we be so full of your good news. So knowing how much we are loved that we can't help but share that with those around us. We love you. Be glorified in us today. In Jesus' name, amen. So the good news about Jesus for me is that we don't need to be perfect and that there's only one perfect one. So all of our strivings and our pressures to do everything right all the time have been accomplished in Christ. And we don't have to be. And he is our savior and all of that. That's it. Okay, my name is Frank and uh, the good news about Jesus is the miracle of forgiveness. That he loved us and forgave us while we were yet sinners. And I think that's more profound than I understand. And that he died on the cross for us uh, because he loved us so much. And uh, I think that that is profound and beautiful and wonderful. And I think that's, I believe it's the meaning of the gospel, or at least one meaning of the gospel. And that's all I have to say. Hmm. Hallelujah. I have been a believer most of my life, um, with a few breaks. But uh, my hope really is uh, because of my age, I am looking forward to spending an eternity with my family. I don't know how many years I have left, but uh, I'm looking forward to meeting all my children, my grandchildren, later on through eternity. And that is my hope, that we will all be there. Um, I would say that the Good news about Jesus is that I've been adopted into a family and I get to enjoy God for who he is and just that journey of uncovering more and more about him is something that's just fascinating and it gives me a ton of joy no matter what my circumstances are. Great on me. Walks up stage. Hey, good luck. <laughs> What has Jesus done for me? Jesus has followed me all my life. He's given me many, many miracles. One, I have found a, a son, a true son of mine, after 55 years. And we have linked up. He is just like me, a wonderful guy. Thank you, Jesus. I'm Sue. Um, what does God mean to me? Um, I'm never alone. He's always with me. He's a good, good father. And um, I just love him. Good news for me because um, even when I uh, do things that are worldly and sin, he's always there for me. He doesn't stop loving me and stop zooming in on my face. And he, he forgives me and I don't have to question if he's being honest about it, like he does forgive me. I don't have to stress about it. So I often think that in order to find this life fulfillment and happiness that I have to gain everyone's approval, everyone has to like me and I have to fit in. And so I've like just grown up with this wrong way of thinking and um, it's often has led me to feel frustrated and disappointed and I just could never quite experience this feeling that I knew I was longing for and so uh, since accepting Jesus into my life and hearing the gospel and just like truly letting it soak into my like every bone um, it's just totally changed my perspective and how I try to live and how I think even and um, how I act and it's been um, for me this permission to let go, um, to stop um, 
trying to have control and allowing myself to experience um, this like calmer way of living and this peace and it has been almost like someone looking you in the eyes and saying it's okay like stop trying so hard um, like you are so loved and you are so enough and just like telling you that like here I'm gonna help you and we're gonna be okay and it's just so cool this like undeserving love that just like ah like really like just gets you at your core and changes you and changes how you um try to live and interact with everyone in your life and it is it's just so good okay so the good news of Jesus to me is that uh, no matter how hard life gets, no matter how hard my own life gets, or when I look at, at the world around me, at the troubles that are new in the news every day, um, Jesus has already overcome all that, and there is hope, and there is um, eternal uh, life for me and, and for all who accept Jesus into your hearts. and. Uh, that I don't have to worry about the, the little things anymore, then I can uh, just be thankful and live a life of gratitude and joy and live into that joy that Jesus has promised. It's part of this good news. Right. All right, um, I'm Simon. Um, we're sitting in our sunroom, just having wrapped up our weekly community group. The good news about Jesus is the people around me and the people who will be watching this you are my brothers and sisters. Christ has adopted me into a family that looks out for each other and calls us to higher ground. And in the tough times we faced, myself and Brenda, especially in parenting, you guys have been a support. And you've been a support because of the mandate of Christ and the call of Him on your lives. I appreciate you guys.